Good morning and welcome. We are so glad that you're with us today. We are continuing our video devotions through the book of 2 Samuel with 2 Samuel chapter 12. And I've got to be honest with you, 2 Samuel chapter 12 is probably one of my favorite stories in all of Scripture. And maybe if you've read along, you'll think, well, that's kind of a weird thing to say. Like, of, of all the stories you could pick, why would this one uh, be one of your favorites? And you're, you're probably thinking that because it's not a very uplifting um, story. It's not a very positive story. And in fact, it deals with some pretty um, dark subject matter. If you'll remember what we've talked about the last few weeks or, or the last few days, excuse me, um, here in 2 Samuel, King David um, has made this tremendous, grievous mistake. This, he's committed this just awful sin. He's committed adultery um, with a married woman. And as if that wasn't bad enough on its own, when he um, reckons with some of the consequences of his sin, instead of just acknowledging the mistake that he made, and instead of admitting that he was a sinner, he decided to try to cover his sin up, to try to run away from the consequences of his sin. And in doing so, he committed an equally bad sin, maybe even a worse sin. He had an innocent man killed. And here in 2 Samuel 12, we get the story of when David finally has to reckon with just how wretched and broken and sinful he is. And this is one of my favorite stories in all of Scripture, not because of David, but because of the prophet Nathan who served King David. It's one of my favorite stories in all of Scripture because of the conviction that Nathan has. And essentially, if you've read along, you'll know this story, but this is how it goes. David's just done this awful, awful thing. Um, and, and Nathan goes and tells him this story in which this um, well-to-do rich man takes advantage of this man that really has nothing um, and, and essentially takes what, what, what Nathan refers to, at least in my translation, as his, his one ewe lamb and slaughters that one man's lamb um, instead of slaughtering one of his many lambs because he was selfish, because he was greedy, because he um, did not value what that lamb meant to the poor man. And, and as you've read, um, when, when Nathan tells David this story, David just becomes incensed that uh, enraged that somebody would do such a thing. How could they be so selfish? How could they be so greedy? How could they be willing to do something so wrong, David says. But as we read the whole point of Nathan telling David this story, King David, this story was that Nathan wanted David to realize just how wicked what David had just done really was. Could you imagine the courage and the conviction it took for Nathan to address King David, the most powerful person in all of Israel, the person who had already demonstrated he was willing to kill someone, um, could you imagine just how much courage Nathan had to have? And see, that's why I love this story. I think of, when I think of strong leaders, when I think of, of good leaders, I, I, I struggle to find a characteristic that I value more in leadership than conviction. And, and, and moral character, knowing what the difference between right and wrong and, and being willing to stand up for what is right and also being willing to name what is wrong no matter what it might cost you. And, and that's why I love this story because Nathan was willing to confront the king and to make the king acknowledge the depths of his wickedness, the depths of his brokenness, the consequences of his sin because Nathan had conviction. And I wonder if we're willing to have as much conviction with ourselves when we fall short of the glory of God, when we're not as obedient to God as we know we should be. Do we have that kind of conviction to be faithful and to be righteous like God calls us to when it comes to acknowledging the many sins we have that should eternally separate us from God. I think there's such an important lesson that we need to learn from David. I mean, excuse me, from Nathan. And that lesson is that we need to, to hate our sin as much as God hates our sin. We need to be as convicted as Nathan that we need to address our sin to root it out and to, to be the righteous and holy people 
that God calls us to be. And we need to take our sin so seriously because we need to reckon with the fact that God's love for us is so great that he was willing to join us in the flesh and to die the death our sins deserve that we might find our life in him. So I hope that you'll have the courage that Nathan has when it comes to confronting your own sin and your own brokenness. I hope you'll have the conviction that Nathan has when it comes to seeking after the good and addressing the bad and the, the evil in the world around us in these days. And we will see you next week um, for 2 Samuel chapter 13.